it's Tara Reed, and today I'm going to show you how to sew a reversible over the collar dog bandana. They're super simple. It's really easy to make them the perfect size for your dog's collar. And I will also show you how to use heat transfer vinyl and add sayings if you are a Cricut and Silhouette person, as well as a sewist. So let's get started. The first step is to calculate the size of fabric you need for this project. So you're going to take your dog collar and you're gonna follow these instructions that again, you can get on my website and you're going to measure it since I'm using a rotary cutter, I'm just going to measure it here. And you're, you don't, you want to measure in between the clasp and any kind of a hook because you don't want the fabric going over that. You won't be able to get your, your leash attached. So I'm going to say 16 inches. Then you need to know how wide the fabric is on your collar. And I have a one inch fabric. Yeah, one inch collar. Then I'm going to look at my dog and decide how long I want it to be. So how, how far down do you want your bandana to hang? And I am going with a measurement of eight inches. So then if I do the calculations, I take the 16 inches, that's the area for the fabric on the collar, and add a half an inch. So I'm going to measure fabric 16 and a half inches wide. And then to get the 10 inches high, it's the one inch of the collar plus a half inch for seam allowances and eight inches of how long I want it to be plus a half inch. So I'm going to do 10 inches by 16 and a half. So to save time, I have already cut that. So now I'm going to put my two fabrics right sides together and I'm going to put it on my mat. Now you can make a paper template if you want, but with mats with measurements, I find it just as easy to do this. So we know that our collar is an inch and then we wanna go a half down. So we're going to make a mark an inch and a half down from the top. So I have it at a half inch mark. So I'm gonna, on both sides. And this is a fabric pen. When I um, iron over that, it's gonna completely disappear like magic. Then I'm going to find the middle point, which at 16 and a half, well, I didn't put it at zero, so I'm just gonna use my ruler. I may measure 15 times instead of cutting wrong. So this is 16 and a half inches wide, so we're gonna go eight and a quarter. So now we have our three marks, and then I'm just going to line my ruler up to cut the two bottom triangles off. Oops, I need a sharper. Time to change my rotary blade, apparently. All right, and then I'm just gonna put those aside and I can use those scraps for some other project. Okay, now I have my two shapes ready to go. I'm gonna turn it over so you can see it a little bit better on that mat. And you'll see that the collar is going to fit inside this section that is straight. So that's the part that's gonna go over it. And so the first thing we're gonna do is go to the sewing machine and sew along this top edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. And then we're going to press that open. Now we're going to press this seam open. And now we're going to fold these in on each side about a quarter inch and then another quarter inch press and then we're going to stitch along there and that's going to create the um, contained end for the dog collar casing. Now that we pressed each side, fold it over, fold it over to encase that raw edge, we're just going to stitch down each side to secure that. So now on the right side we have nice finished edge on both sides. Now we're going to keep it right sides together and I'm going to pin this all together and we are gonna sew the angled edges, but not where we just sewed. This is gonna be left open to put our collar through. So just down here and up here. Now 
going to quickly snip at the point and I like to kind of go on both sides when it's such a sharp point so that that's going to turn nicely. And then you're just going to gently turn it right side out through one of the collar holes, which are a little bit small, but you can do it. I always like to totally flip that before pushing everything through so you're not putting as much stress. And then you're going to iron it so that that's nice and crisp. Okay, press that so that is ready to go. Now the next thing we are going to do is we need to sew a line to keep the collar in place. I guess you don't actually have to, but I like to. So you're going to just take your collar and double check that if you sew from where it comes down to the angled part straight across that your collar is going to fit. So yes, we have plenty of room, so the collar is going to fit. All right, I'm gonna take my ruler. I'm tired of moving my camera, so we're just gonna do this right on my sewing machine table. So I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna go from where the, the straight part ends, like the color channel ends on each side. And I'm gonna use my fabric pen and draw a line. And that gives me a beautiful guideline, hot pink that will disappear like magic when I run an iron over it, a hot iron over it. So I just, I love those things. They feel magic every time I use them. And then it is done. All you need to do now is feed the collar through the channel. If you really want to, you could top stitch here if you want that look. I'm just going to leave it as is. See how well that worked. Now dog's going to be super cute and you can just flip it and do it the opposite way. So the reason I did this with white is I'm going, I also am a crafter, so I'm going to use my Cricut machine and I'm going to make a design. I have a lot of designs that I sell on Etsy and design bundles for specifically for dog bandanas. I'm going to show you how to put one of those on there. If you're not a Cricut person and don't want to do that, you can be done this video now. If you want to keep going, stay with me. It'll be super fast. Now you need to decide what size the image is going to be. You want to keep it down more towards the point so that your design doesn't get lost if this bunches up around your dog's neck or they have a furry neck. So you wanna keep it down. So you're gonna take a ruler, and I'm using a quilting ruler, but you can use any kind of ruler and just kind of decide, okay, about you know three by three, if it's a square design, would work well. So the one I ended up doing, you can't really see it till I weed it, but it is, do do do, um, like three by four and a quarter. And I decided that was gonna work because it will be up here and it's still down a bit from the top. So you figure out your size, you go to your Cricut or your Silhouette machine and you cut your design in reverse on heat transfer vinyl. And then I recommend leaving it on your mat and weeding while it is on the mat because then you're not going to have two things moving around. You can buy little containers to put your scraps in, but what I find to be the easiest is just to put a piece of masking tape and I just fold it over on each end right next to my workspace so that when I am pulling it off, I can just place it right on there and it sticks because the heat transfer has no stick to it, so it's not gonna to stick to anything. All right, so now I'm just gonna weed this. One thing I love about heat transfer is you can just pull the majority of it off. It's not gonna lift other things up. So now I'm just gonna make sure I get the inside of all the letters and any other little area that may not have come off. These This font, these S's have a very small opening there so they often the vinyl sometimes rips so you just want to make sure you get every part that you don't want on your dog bandana pulled out i 
apologize that I did that weeding on a black mat. It made it easier to see the bandana, but not this design. So we're gonna do, I'm the reason we can't have nice things because that's pretty fun to put on a, for any dog. So now I'm just gonna gently place that, make sure it's centered where I want it on the bandana. And again, remember to have your design down towards the point because if you get up here, it might buckle a little bit or get stuck under your dog's neck. And you wanna make sure if you're going through this effort that everything is showing. As for a project, I always go back and double check my heat settings here at cricut.com forward slash heat guide. So for this project, because it's pretty small, I'm gonna use the mini. So I'm just gonna click on that so that the line underneath it is showing. Then I'm going to choose my material. I'm gonna say everyday iron on. And the base material for my dog bandana is 100% cotton. And then I click apply and voila, it tells me to preheat my mini to medium and to use it for 25 seconds. So super easy to make sure you're not over or under heating and you get good results. Now I'm gonna get out my Cricut heat press mat that is going to act as an ironing board. And I have my Cricut Mini. Now I'm gonna heat it up to medium, just like the website told me to. So I'm just gonna press twice. So it's two out of three. And when it's heating up, those are gonna be orange and it will beep and these will be green when we are ready to press. All right, I just heard the beep and everything is green, meaning we are good to go. All right, so on the website, it said to do it for 25 seconds and just move it around. So I'm just gonna move it, pressing down. And making sure I cover the entire design. And then you're just gonna gently test to see if it's coming up, okay? And it also recommends you turn it over and give it heat from the back. And then you're supposed to let that cool and then just slowly remove it. And voila, you have a design on the dog bandana. So this one is again, reversible. So I have a you know funny saying on the one side, which is why I did it white. And then the other side is just a pretty print. And I'm also a fabric designer. This is one of the designs from my Winter Barn Quilts fabric from Riley Blake Design. Mm -hmm.